Power Season 6, Final Betrayal, Episode 3, Forgot About Dre. Uh, let's just get right to it. The last episode, they had told Dre, listen, we're moving you from this safe house. We're going to move you out of New York. We're going to move you to a different spot, but, you know, we're going to move you to a different safe house so you can testify and get the hell out of New York. So, pack your shit. We're going to move you and the baby. <clears throat> so, we pick up at the house, you know, so they can be moved and transported to the next location so he can go testify. Well, as you can guess, everything goes completely left. A shootout ensues and Donovan takes down just about everybody. He gets shot in the process, but in the middle of help probably being on the way, Dre decides, you don't need to live. Donovan lets him know, yo, I just saved you and your daughter's life. Dre, being the fuck nigga that he is, fuck nigga by nature, <laughs> goes, I ain't asked you to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Shoots Donovan in front of his daughter. And blood even gets on the baby. And then they try to flee. He ends up in the airport. And it doesn't work because they catch his ass. I don't know why he thought it'd be that easy, but, you know, it wasn't. <clears throat> Let's see. Then, of course, this was the Jimenez cartel. How the hell they found out about the safe house and that Dre was there, I don't know, but they found out. And... Yeah, the AUSA office moves forward with the plans for Dre to still testify. So, we move forward to a new scene. And this scene was talked about all over Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Hell, a few people on MySpace were probably talking about the shit. It was that viral. Um, all I saw was Lorenz Tate trending. And then we soon found out why. <laughs> there was this scene with him just giving the shit to this big old bouncing, curly-headed ass, brown ass, Dominican, Panamanian, whatever the hell. Uh, that type of John, she just, just all, just all, just, 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 just busterful. <laughs> That's not even a word. Just busting out. Yeah, that type. You just real busty. Just everywhere. Um, and curly hair everywhere, and they don't. The DNC calls while they getting down doing this. I'm just like this. Just this just went way way different. Um, <laughs> it's smashing the shit out of this lady. And um, long story short, he's on the phone with the DNC. He thinks the DNC is about to pump more money into his campaign, and he's wrong. So we pick up at Tate headquarters, and as we go to the office, we see that the lady he's in bed with is not his girlfriend, not his wife, not his fiance, but oh. She belongs to the white man that he fucked up in the previous episode. His staffer that he blamed for being embarrassed at his press conference. And he called him a little bitch. And he had punched him and kicked him and spit on him and, you know, poured water on him. And, you know, threw a match and tried to light him on fire. All of that shit. Um, <laughs> he really did fuck him up in like 3.5 seconds, though. No bullshit. Long story short, um... When Tate shows up, the little white boy is like, like this nigga, you know. And the lady's like, you know, I told you we got to forgive him. You know, this campaign is so much bigger than you. Much, much bigger. And I cried when she said, I was like, yo, she childish, but I'm childish because I found that shit entirely too funny. And even his face was like, Rrr. like, what do you mean? Like, what? what? What you mean? Um, And then after that, who but Ramona Garrity walks in. That's the DNC's gift. It ain't no money. It ain't no new computers. It ain't no new iPhone that just got released. It ain't, you know, a new microwave or, you know, a George Foreman grill. It's Ramona Garrity. And she's there to hook up the campaign to ensure that you guys win. So she has a list, a roll call. Of uh, everybody who about to lose their goddamn job, she firing every damn body. You understand me? She is the new celebrity apprentice. She taking everybody's job away. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You're unemployed. You're unemployed. Nobody got a job at this point. And 
in the midst of all that, she's trying to figure out who the hell James St. Patrick is. I want to know about him. I want to meet him. Tate is trying to prevent that from happening because he knows about James more than the untrained eye. And Ramona will be the untrained eye so far. And Ramona like, fuck that. I still want to know who he is. So she digs up dirt and goes to find him at Truth. And them two have like a little light flirtatious conversation. Tate don't want Ramona nowhere near Ghost and vice versa. Stay the hell away from each other. He just is trying to make sure that this does not happen. Because he knows what's about to happen. Because he's seen it happen before with fancy ass. He knows how charming Ghost is. He knows you a light skinned nigga with a beard and a suit. This can only go one way. You don't fuck the shit out of this woman. And Ramona, she talked real seductive when she's speaking to Ghost. So she just is like, you know, everything is in is coded in take my puss. <laughs> she just wants him to take it on a platter, a plate, a TV dinner, a TV tray, a, a end table. Just, just take it at this point. Just here. I'm, I'm divorced. I ain't had none in a minute. Just, I, I, I don't give a damn that you married. I want it from you. Which brings us to the next meeting. Tasha, Tate, and Ramona all sit down because they, you know, she, aka they, wants James to still be a part of the campaign. I don't know why they need the St. Patrick's because they ain't really shit, but. I don't know. I guess James St. Patrick is a good community figure, allegedly. He was on trial for murder, and his daughter was murdered, but okay. Anyway, so they want Ghost and Tasha to be a part of this. Tasha, like, nigga, fuck you. I don't forget about what you did. You exploited my daughter's funeral for your own personal gain. I don't forget that shit. Ramona, like, okay, bitch, look. A, I want to fuck your husband. B, we need him to be a part of this campaign. C, all the above. What the hell can we do to shut you up and make your ass happy? I'm trying to deal with you here. Tasha like, hmm, give me a business. How fast can we get the permits and the building open? Because she sees that her mother has been doing this little babysitting gig. So she thinks that since mommy making a little piece of change, she can go open up a daycare center and turn that into a cash cow. Just a dummy. Um, So she gets that from you know, this agreement and this meeting with Tate and Ramona and, you know, that's basically that. And they agree and they basically do a handshake on that and there's that. We go to Choke and Effie and the little white boy, I don't even know his name, uh, and, you know, Reek are all talking about how they need more product to push and Reek is, you know, gathering the last of what Kanan left him and he's talking about he'll get more from his connect Then him and Effie sit down and talk about you know, losing a sibling to, you know, murder or whatever. And um, Effie lets it slip that her brother died in a botched robbery. I can't be the only one whose automatic alarms went off because at the end of the day, we've seen a lot of young dudes in this show die in botched robberies. Who is she referring to? Is it somebody that Reek was rolling with back when he was pulling them licks with, you know, Brains and Ray Ray? Or is it on the other side with Kanan and Jukebox? Somebody is this girl's brother who we've seen before and we're going to find out before the season is over. This little light-skinned heifer is somebody that we know. We're about to find out. And then Tariq later confesses that he does not actually have a connect. The feds are the stupidest people on this damn show. Alicia Jimenez's time, you know, you know, to be in front of the jury and be in front of the courts to plead her case is now. And it's time for Dre to testify. Well, in the middle of that, Jason goes, I want Alicia Jimenez in front of me. I want her captured. I want her alive. And I want her with me. And he tells Tommy and Ghost the same thing to see who can deliver. He playing Tom and Jerry with them again, playing puppeteer, as usual, with Jason. He's an extortionist. He's very demanding. He's a big ass. Okay, they really trying to fuck with my lights. And I'm not appreciating it. I don't like this at all. I don't do that. Um, let me hurry up and get this video done. <laughs> um, so in court, Alicia is given a, a cup of water. And she's given a cup of water by the bailiff. And then the cup of water is switched. And at the if you look at the bailiff's phone, it says there's been a $10,000 deposit, you know, given by unknown or whatever the case may be. Alicia starts to have this coughing, vomiting fit. Dre in the courtroom. Uh, they rush Dre out. 
and um, they rush Alicia out. And Tommy's plan is starting to ensue. He got a whole body of people. He got his whole crew involved in this. Uh, he got Two Bit and what's the other dude's name? Spanky. And then he got Keisha there as well. Ghost has no bodies because this is not Ghost's field anymore. He doesn't do this. He allegedly, supposedly, apparently is legit now. Is he ever really legit? No. Um, and then the feds do a clean sweep of the bathroom. What they don't know, because the feds are stupid, they didn't look inside the stalls. And Keisha's in there, so she texts Tommy. She's in here. Tommy and, you know, the whole crew are posing as EMTs. Two-Bit and Spanky go in there and get her, strap her, and then they get into an ambulance and take her ass away. Ghost and Tommy see each other, and at this point, Ghost realize, I've lost this shit. And when Alicia comes to, she's in front of Jason. Jason's like, listen, bitch, I want your whole connection. I want the whole network. I want everything, every pill, every line of coke. I want it all. You're going to tell me everything. You're going to give me every name. You're going to give me everything. Alicia, like, nigga, you're right. The hell I am. Let me get a cigarette in this motherfucker because I know how this shit about to go. And but Jason, you know, he don't really do too much talking. You either going to give him what he wants or you're going to die. And Alicia, being the smart ass that she is, the, you know, eternal smart ass, she like, whoever did this shit to you, whoever did this shit to me, going to do it to you too. So, and he shoots her while she's smoking. And he shot her in the chest and the neck. And the smoke was coming out of her. It, it's not funny, but it was like some, it was like some Beetlejuice shit. Because the smoke was coming out of her. And then, damn Tommy, you know he loved to kill everybody. Tommy is pissed. He's like, I wanted to kill this bitch. And Jason like, okay, but I wanted to kill her. This is what I wanted to do. But she did a good job. You know what I'm saying? His whole thing was, yo, whoever brings me her, I'm canceling your debt. We're good. We're square. And, you know, of course, Tommy won this round. At the end of all of that... Tommy calls Ghost and lets him know, listen, the only way we're going to have Jason stay out of our pockets and stay off our asses is if we team up and get together. And Tommy, of course, being extremely hard-headed, goes, I'm going to cancel Christmas on your ass next time I see you. And Keisha ends up telling Tommy, listen, you can continue to launder money and, you know, clean your money through my spot. It's hilarious because she got mad at Tasha for doing this very same thing, but because, see... Tommy is dicking her down and cutting her in and making her think that she, you know, is a trap queen because she didn't did one smart thing, allegedly, stupid ass. You know, now she in love and now she thinks she Tommy, you know, she thinks she a queen pen. So, you know, now she, you know, and low-key, I always felt like Keisha wanted to be Tasha and this is her chance. So she wants Tasha as close to, you know, her old life and she wants to be in Tasha's, you know, uh, you know, well, excuse me, she wants Tasha, I guess, to be is close to her old life, meaning Keisha's old life, and Keisha wants to be in Tasha's old life, meaning, you know, the first lady of the drug world. And that's really that for that episode. So, oh, and then Ghost being so desperate to pay Jason and all these different people and keep his businesses open and pay these debts, he calls Simon stupid ass, and Simon is all too excited again to have Ghost under his thumb and to have him by the boss. This this shit just gets worse and worse. I'm just like, damn, Ghost, we back at the bottom again. You did all of that to get from up under this nigga, and you back again in this shit. But anyway, guys, tell me what you thought of the episode. Like, rate, comment, subscribe. Tell me who you think Effie really is, and we'll be back with the next episode. Later.